Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the next episode of Hard Knock Garage, um, where I'm going to show you, and well, talk about doing a patina paint job. Um, I'll show you, I'll demonstrate it, how I actually do different techniques in another video. This one is just a general discussion on what you can do and the broad aspects of how you do it, um, and I'll show you more details later. So I've just got a selection of um, some models, some of these are not finished. Um, just showing you some of the different kinds of effects that you can get uh, with patina. So, got a few different ones there. Generally, um, what is a patina? Well, uh, for, for me, um, when I've seen patina on, on uh, old cars, typically it's where the paint um, has uh, been come off because of uh, the weather and time um, it might have had overgrowth on it it might have rusted out underneath um, or you know there's a bit of panel damage and, and things so generally it's the effects of uh, time and the environment on a paint job over a number of years so the actual patina that you get really depends on the color of the vehicle and the layers of paint that are on it and how much it's rusted and whether it's been in the sun or a wet environment or a dry environment so there's a lot of variety that you can get um, when I some of these builds when I've um, looked at them so particularly the Schwedes Frankenbird um, that I'm working on that's based on an actual car so I'm trying to recreate the exact patina that's on that car um, I think I did a pretty good job um, but that's a little bit different to say this one which I call the Rotten Banana um, this Porsche where I was just doing a patina paint job and I wasn't you know basing it on the specific vehicle um, same with the Chev that's based on I kind of saw some photos of a, of a, some cars like this um, and recreated that uh, so this one used to be yellow the Chev was green I think a sort of a, a, a tearly colour and cream uh, this one was repainted so it doesn't really count um, but it's got green underneath the copper uh, these two so this one was done uh, using a method uh, called the salt method um, where you basically paint it um, a primer color so I use um, most of the time I've been using the Valio uh, red brown surface primer or I think I actually probably did this one in the Tamiya surface primer um, red brown so uh, did this the same way uh, so paint it in the red brown uh, let it dry and then you can this particular one was done by uh, spraying it with water so a water mister and you get the little beads of water because um, they kind of bead up on it and then you can either do one of two things uh, one is you can sprinkle powder or salt they use on a real car um, I was using I think it might have been icing sugar or baking soda uh, baking powder sprinkle that on and where it hits the water it kind of sets um, and then let that dry and then you paint over and I would have used Tamiya Black um, over top of that. Now I'm pretty sure I did this with without this, the powder, just actually painting over while it was still wet with the beads on. Um, and then when you kind of wipe it off um, afterwards or give it a light sand, the bits with the water underneath or the salt or the, or the powder come off um, and you end up with this kind of effect this one was done in a similar way except um, it was originally yellow so I sanded down the yellow um, in some places right through uh, then I sprayed it with the primer um, the red brown then I put the powder or <clears throat> water on it then I sprayed it with the black and then I sanded it back and that's where you get that multi-layered effect um, with the yellow the black and the brown and then the the metal that comes through 
this uh, track here um, was a completed build but I I took some parts off it so it's looking a little bit worse for wear but um, essentially it's a truck on a nice car chassis uh, so I can't actually remember what color this truck was originally uh, but I sanded it down put the primer on then in this case rather than putting any salt or powder or water on it I just airbrushed it with the blue um, and obviously didn't uh, airbrush it particularly thick so just kind of spraying around so that's where you get the primer coming through and the top looks a bit grainy because it's um, I would have held the airbrush back a bit um, probably a bit tricky to do with a spray can but you can certainly do it with an airbrush um, and then just thicken up bits and leave other bits quite thin um, so you get that kind of effect over on the the Chev Balier, so again this was uh, a tealy colour and the cream, two-tone. Um, so what I did is I sanded it. Um, I took it, obviously stripped everything off, took all the chrome off, um, sanded it to roughen it up. Some parts you may go right through to the metal, other parts you might not, depending on kind of the effect. Uh, and this one, I don't think I sprayed it completely with primer. I think I, I probably did bits and pieces of it. Um, and perhaps a light dusting in certain areas. And then I... Um, so this was, yeah, this was done on top. And then I would have sanded it. And then what I did uh, on this one was use some rust and black wash um, so I've got some different so light rust wash a rust and the shading gray which is uh, like a black wash so it's a very thin um, gray black color and I, I just uh, probably I did a little bit with brush painting um, and then spray you know ear brushing just to get the different kind of colors and then sanding bits and pieces so um, you know just just to get that effect the other thing I did is I've got some little powder bottles used to be rapid fix from uh, a glue where you put the glue on and then you put this stuff in and it sets the glue instantly and um, so you can use it with glue but at the moment this has actually got uh, baking powder in it so I would uh, either brush or spray some stuff and then sprinkle a bit of powder on and that gets you the texture all right you can see there's actually a, a fine kind of texture in there can I zoom in a bit with that so that that can be quite um, neat to do and then you kind of just vary how much or how little you do on different parts um, to get that effect the uh, beetle truck if I just move that one over so this was originally well actually I, I think it was it's, it's two different models so I would have I'm pretty sure I stripped the paint on this completely uh, then I've painted it a gray primer and then I've painted it green um, can't remember the color green but it was one of these uh, Valio paints uh, and then I've gone over with the copper color um, so both airbrush and acrylics didn't quite come out how I thought it would be and that's one thing about patinas um, sometimes they can come out a little bit differently to what you expect so whereas the Swedish one I'm trying to do something exact um, this one I didn't really have a plan as such but you do things like um, you know where you think on, on, if you look at pictures of real cars where the wear patterns are likely to be um, you know around doors and under under guards on on the edges and things um, you know the car you could imagine that the car might have um, for example been sitting uh, under half a tarpaulin and half exposed to the sun so that may cause different effects as well um, so you really just can play around 
um, I probably want to add a little bit more for some of these parts um, so you can just get you know your wash with a brush I just stick it in a little bit of in a little plastic contain a uh, lid pour some in and then just brush various bits maybe add a bit of powder um, and you can try different colors of browns and ready colors to get different effects as well um, so on the Shweddy's build this one's still in progress this was a little bit different because I was trying to recreate the as close as I could to the actual car and the actual car had lots of different parts on it so um, quite interesting uh, for this one I think it was originally the petty blue color so that's the original um, door just sanded a bit uh, so I would have sanded the body down after stripping everything off it uh, then I am except for the doors I painted it with the surface primer so airbrushed it gave it a, probably a couple of coats uh, and then there were some different bits so this is the primer and then I've gone over and I've put the rusty stuff on quite a bit of powder you can see there's, there's a, a texture on there um, and some a bit of black wash and maybe a couple of other brownie colors just to give it that um, kind of depth of color with the different kind of patterns the hood or the, the bonnet and the, the trunk or the boot um, have got the, the primer uh, with a blue over top and there's a few little bits I've put a little bit of white um, so just airbrushed a little bit of white on these parts um, maybe added a little bit of rust as well so then you've got the green which again is the primer with the green over top um, black is just airbrush black over the primer with a mask and it's a different color yeah and on this side it's uh, a lighter tone um, so I may have put a lighter version of the surface primer possibly a different brown um, just airbrushed over and then a little bit of brush um, parts just to give it that texture so different ways of doing it this one over here is a ramp truck I'm working on um, hasn't quite come out how I thought and I wasn't quite sure what to do with the ramp but again it's a red paint um, with a dark um, just a probably a black or maybe the dark wash um, airbrushed over just to darken it up but I might actually redo that one because um, it hasn't quite come out how I thought so there you go that's a general kind of introduction to um, doing patina uh, you can have a lot of fun with it just uh, you know trying different textures and different techniques and you know worst case um, if it doesn't really work you can just sand it back or strip the paint off and have another go at it um, so I, I am working on uh, one just here which is a Volkswagen Beetle, a Maisto one um, doing some rusting on it and this is one's going to be a 50-50 so half will be rusted and patinaed and the other half will be um, kind of shiny and new just sort of something I do for a display that's coming up um, yeah so look uh, I will do some more where I actually show uh, you know me me in the process of doing it um, but if you've got any questions you want to know any more uh, hit me up uh, be really cool if you did a like and subscribe um, and let me know what you think cheers